Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I can see people are starting to, to filter in, which is great. So we're just going to give it a couple of minutes, just let everybody get on, uh, get in. Um, what would be good is if we could start testing some of the Q&A boxes. Let us know that you're here. Let us know that you're live. Uh, you can hear us. You can see that see us. We're not sort of moving around like CCTV. <laughs> the connections, connections all, all, all going properly. So if you just drop something in the Q&A boxes at the bottom of the screen, uh, that'd be great to let us know. Cool. I can see Phil. Phil Hobden's joined as well. Phil, coming to get some new information. <laughs> hi, Kirsty. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, you. Hi, Matthew as well. Thanks for letting us know. Phil as well. Yeah. So, okay, we're not talking to ourselves, which is always a good start. Yeah, exactly. On Into a blank things. box. Yes. So uh, we'll we'll give it another uh, minute or so just to let people come on because they're still trickling through. Hopefully, we've not lost too many people to the Pina Cladas and. Uh, gardens yeah. today because it is quite nice out there isn't it yeah i had to take myself to the office to get some uh, get nice and cool and get some yeah. get some quiet space yeah I, I did make it there today so i've got a whole wall of fans going on so hopefully nobody can hear that it doesn't sound like an airplane in the background no uh, but it'd be a much worse sight if i didn't have them on so i thought i uh, i'll give it a go cool so, thanks leanne thanks claire so we seem to be working well which is good i'll just give it one more moment before we jump on just to give people another chance get in great stuff thanks david yeah so okay so well let's let's start kicking it off um and uh, it seems to be a good number of us on here now so we'll let it start trickling through so um just to run through a bit of housekeeping to start with uh, so throughout the uh throughout the chat today in the webinar feel free to ask any questions as we're going along and um, if it seems to be quite a good fit for that point in time in the topic that we're talking about we might bring it up but if not we'll save any that are unanswered for the end and uh, we'll make sure to get your, your questions answered before we go so feel free to pop those in uh, as you think of them and as we go along and, and if you want to try out the Q&A box just say hi at the bottom to see how it works and um, we uh, in terms of uh, getting going in a minute I'm just going to introduce myself and I hand over to, to Ollie to, to introduce himself because he'll do a much better job than I will um, <laughs> and then we'll get into today's topic and I've got a few questions to, to trickle in for today to get going so my name is david from xg magazine so uh if you've not come across xg magazines or user magazine before we are the independent magazine for zero users by zero users so we all use zero ourselves we've learned it and the quirks and the good bits and the not so good bits and especially with all the apps in the ecosystem uh, that actually link into zero um, and that's what we really like to sort of bring back to the community build a platform for um through the magazine through the physical uh, and digital magazine as well. So if you want to go to xumagazine.com, if you're not if you've not done before, you can see everything on there um, about that. So uh, Ollie, do you want to introduce yourself and capitalise? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, David, thank you firstly for inviting me in, in to uh, to speak and uh, and be interviewed. Hopefully, those questions are not going to be too much of a curveball. I don't quite know exactly what they are yet, so uh, <laughs> we'll see see how I do on those. So for everybody that's listening, um, I'm one of the co-founders at uh, Capitalize.com. So. I head up the the product side um, and really anything that's to do with customers. So looking at the brand, uh, our strategy and, and the product. Um, so hopefully um, I've uh, spoken to a few, few accountants and to understand um, what your uh, challenges are and, and how can we solve those challenges. Um, in terms of, of uh, the, my journey in Capitalize, um, obviously we, we set off now four years ago, so we're kind of four years in, um, and um, now 100% of focus on the accounting industry. Um, it's been for us a great pleasure working with, with accountants and also particularly with the ecosystem as well. Um, so um, I very much enjoy being there and, and listening and hearing everybody's stories, really. That's good. And, and the first question, so what inspired you to create Capitalize and, and launch the company that is that it is? Yeah, so yeah, interesting. Gosh, I have to see if I can get the story out in a in a in a, in a manner that makes sense. But um, I met uh, I met Paul, who's uh, who's obviously also co-founder and, and CEO at, at Capitalize. Um, um, he comes very much from a finance background, so you know he knows um, comes from a bank, um, knows lending community, um, and I come very much from a product background. So used to building SaaS products, I've done that for 15 years. Um, and together, whilst you, you know, we've kind of got the, the fin and the and the tech, so to speak, um, we noticed the same problem. Um, both of us had worked with SMEs. I, I ran um, a consultancy for 10 years, um, and you know, sort of through the trials and tribulations, know what it's like trying to build a business, um, and know really how important it is to to have capital in the business. And that's you know that's the, where the name Capitalize.com comes from. 
um, and the power of it. Um, and so I really just wanted to see, you know, what could we do in that in that area? I think at the same time, we noticed kind of, you know, 2014, 15, um, quite how many lenders there were in the market. And whilst we didn't know at the time um, what was happening, it was this kind of transformation in the, in the banking community where rather than going into your, your, your main high street bank, and for me, I grew up in mid Wales and the, uh, the nearest place for me was a, a town that had one branch of HSBC. And so, you know, I had a choice of one. And that's where I would go. That's where I had my, my junior account, graduate account, um, mortgage, everything was with them and naturally my business accounts too. Um, Paul had a very similar experience. And what we realized is that that I wouldn't go to a bank anymore. They, they, they were becoming less relevant to me um, as time went on. And there were lots of new products in the market. But at the same point, there was so many products in the market, it was just so difficult to find the right one. Um, so it's a very embryonic challenge that we that we saw there. And, you know, I think we saw it, we didn't know if anybody else saw it. So we kind of went around and started speaking to people and of course, spoke, speaking to investors and so on, you know, with, with a six slide presentation saying, you know, this is this marketplace thing that we're thinking of that, that is needed in the market. Um, and I went around trying to see if actually it was a, it was a real problem. Um, as we got deeper into it, we realized that, you know, there was kind of other other dots that were joining up um firstly the closures of bank branches so whilst um we probably hadn't noticed it um it, it became apparent to me when that single hsbc branch um is now called the bank with a welsh accent um and it's actually a bar um so it's no longer hsbc but it's a it's a bar and i've, I've seen the same thing being mirrored phil's actually been picking up uh, a number of different photos um of different places with different banks converted into different bars so you know it became apparent that that, that you know that access point was was going um and so you know i think it sort of strengthened our resolve in in, in trying to solve this problem so in 2015 we, we set the business up um 2016 we launched um so we're going for four years now um we built yeah. up you know we had to build up the the lender side so we spent you know a good probably 18 months speaking with lenders understanding the products uh, understanding which were the play, who were the players in the market kind of building up that that big book of, of lenders so we now have 100 lenders on the platform um who you can access through capitalizers marketplace so that that's that's been our journey um you know really the the, the accountant aspect came in very early on for us but but took a while to become, you know, that really our, our, our main focus. Um, we knew that working with accountants um, was great for businesses um, because they get the support they need. Um, it was only until, you know, fairly, fairly later on did we realize that actually the same problem that businesses experienced was the same problem that accountants were, were having too. When, yeah. when, when their client came to them saying, you know, I've got a, a funding gap in my business um, or I want to have this growth plan, you know, where should I go? Um, it only, I think, dawned on us relatively late that, in fact, um, accountants were being turned to as a trusted advisor and therefore, you know, we could also say, serve the same solution through to accountants to help their clients. And then as it was born, um, capitalize you know, advisor led funding platform where we could, uh, you know, provide this as a service line for accountants to, to take to their clients and, you know, I guess the rest, rest is almost history, but not a very early history at this point. Um, and uh, it'd be great to share a bit about where we're going next as well, you know, as we go through this. Yeah, yeah and, and thanks for that. And that's a really nice basis for us to follow on from, because I think the key at the moment, I think what's happened over the, the last probably four or five, well, in the six months now is exasperated. Um, something that was coming out anyway, like you, like you touched on, bank branches were closing. If you try to get through to a bank, typically even before sort of, uh, the sort of COVID situation, you were typically sitting on hold for a good while unless you had a business big enough that they took interest in you. Um, yeah. And trying to get through to, to the lending teams and things like that just took forever. And we, yeah, we saw it a lot with, especially lots of the partners that we work with and advisors and accountants, is that they're being asked more and more. It's a case of, look, can, can you just deal with this for me? Like, can you do yeah. it? Which is great. Yeah. But then equally, if you're the accountant sitting on the other side of that table and you're thinking, yeah, that's great, but I don't really know what to do. It's a case of how how do I where do I start on the journey of trying to find you the best source of funding and giving you the options on that so I think this is really really interesting and it's only been brought more to the forefront over the last exactly, few months yeah. with C bills bounce back loans and, and that type of thing yeah absolutely I mean um I think we, we all wish that that uh, this hadn't happened and, and lockdown hadn't yeah. happened and you know it's been a difficult time um for businesses for lenders for for everybody to and accountants accounting firms to reconfigure so it's been i think very tiring for everybody um yeah. you know i think what what we saw is is um i guess the, the same problems that are there but just being exasperated and highlighted in ways yeah. that you couldn't have imagined you know the 
um, the number of applications you would have seen on the news was, you know, 10 times above what you would otherwise have seen. Therefore, many more people were having challenges of getting through to the funds that they need. Um, and of course, there was an aspect of urgency to it with, with such the, the extreme um, nature of the lockdown and the drop in revenues and therefore the cash um, that would be required to sustain a business. Um, and yeah. whether that was time for furlough um, funds to come in or it was um, the time for landlord negotiations to happen or whatever else it might be, um, you know, there was certainly urgency there. So. I think you know th these are problems that are not new it's just they were highlighted in the most extreme extreme case um from from our perspective you know that this, the other thing that, that happened was that um it became so obvious that, that the accounting community was so integral to that response um and we're, we're really the front line quite frankly for, for smes so with um with so much government support out there whether it was you know, grants first, um, the furloughs, the um, or or even C bills and bounce back loans. Um, business owners just need help to navigate that. Um, and I think that kind of maybe draws a little bit of attention to, to where we see Capitalize being. So, you know, as Capitalize, we're always about capital. So for us, you know, for Paul and I, um, capital is 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 what what businesses need. It's not necessarily debt um, that they that they that is a, is a solution. So. Um, accountants have this unique position to be in a place where um, they can provide agnostic advice, um, consultations to clients and be there you know, for the long term and build deeper relationships with their clients that benefit both the accounting firm to have you know, long term repeating revenues and also for the SME to have someone who knows about their business they can always turn to. So, you know, that, that we just see as, as, as being strengthened. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite an optimist in, in how I see technology improving our lives, but whilst automation is often um, billed as a challenge for accountants. I think actually it also provides an opportunity um, for, for, for to focus on other other aspects of the relationship with the client rather than necessarily the day-to-day -day, um, your numerical input and transformations and ca tax calculations that um, perhaps are less human and, and provides you know, less value ultimately to SMEs directly. So I think we're seeing a big shift. It's been a negative experience um, for, for, for many people, but also I think transformational in in how we work. Um, you know, we've we've been working remotely. Um, the focus has been on digital technologies. We, we're obviously on Zoom, which I think we were just ch chatting about before everybody joined about how remarkable their growth has been. So, you know, that, that there are positives that come out of it, um, and hopefully learnings learnings there too. When it comes to C bills and bounce back loans. Um, it's you know obviously the lending market has changed massively um you know we, we saw a situation where um i think it was the lockdown was what the 16th 17th of of march siebel's was launched 23rd with a very rocky start so there was a, there was a gap there where you know that there was a lot of demand on the incumbent banks to deliver something that which they didn't know how to deliver nor did they quite frankly want to at that time um to many of the businesses that needed the help um so um you know, I think we can all remember that rocky start. Obviously, bounce backs is 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 a very different lending product in the market. So, um, as Capitalize, we don't actually facilitate bounce back loans through us. It's a it's a direct product directly with the banks, as as everyone will know. Um, so, there are a number of banks that offer it, but typically they'll be the main trading banking relationship for an SME. So, bounce back loans. Obviously, there's no underwriting process, so there's not a commercial price, and nor is there a risk assessment of whether a business can afford to repay that loan. Um, and so as a result, they've been they've been issued extremely quickly, um, which um, for many has been you know a, a blessing to have that 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 security I guess that knowing that they can have cash to to survive. Um, and of course now that the 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 kind of the hangover of that is um, okay I've taken taken this loan do I actually need it if not I can probably repay it with no fees. Um, so there's a big a bigger aspect of that going on in the market. There's now 34 billion that's been issued through uh, bounce backs. Um, well over a million, um, a million SMEs, um, and then those who have used it who now think who are now thinking right well you know how can I how can I grow the business out from here? The average loan size in bounce backs is around thirty thousand um, pounds or a little under thirty thousand pounds. So you know for many businesses that's enough to perhaps see the crisis through, but perhaps not the recovery. So there's still plenty of of, of road to cover, um, particularly as you know HMRC liabilities are accruing. Um, with uh, VAT deferred to, to 2021, um, landlords may have liabilities that they'll probably come back fighting for as of 1st of October when the moratorium is lifted. So, you know, there's a lot of work there to help businesses through the crisis or through the recovery, should we say, rather than necessarily the crisis. Yeah. Um, from the lending perspective, then, when it comes to, to C bills, um, which is for businesses who probably 
typically 500k and above. Um, so Seabor starts at 25% at of turnover is the maximum you can borrow, and obviously bounce back go up to 50,000 pounds. So you know, typically, bounce the Seabor's lending will start around 75, 80,000 pound requirement and up. And obviously, it's personal guarantee free up to 250,000 pounds, and you can have multiple Seabor's. When it first started, there were very few lenders that could do it. Um, there were not many accredited, and now um, we see basically anything that was in the unsecured or invoice finance or asset finance space is, is broadly a Seabills um, lend. Um, and so really that the market is is now Seabills where it used to be unsecured lending. Um, and so that's, that's uh, you know, it's a good thing, I think. You know, the government decided to, to pursue a market-based solution. The, the, the bad thing about market-based solution is that it took a bit of time to get going, but the good thing about it is it's quite sustainable. So, you know, the, these are commercial lending decisions backed by the government. The same program existed before um, the crisis, and so I imagine could probably exist for some time yet to go, um, because it, it's uh, it's relatively a lower risk profile for the government compared to bounce back. So I think from Capitalizer's perspective, we, we've been doing a lot of C-bills work, um, that and secured, so property and, and, and the like, um, and that lending market is very much open. So, um, you know, we work now with, I think it's 35 C-bills lenders, um, and then yeah. we've also have um, around about 10 or 12 property lenders, uh, and we just learnt, launched commercial property as a workflow through Capitalize uh, just yesterday. Um, so that, that's likely to be continuing, and the, the great thing there is there is choice. So um, you know, the, the role of us as a marketplace in the market is to make sure that, that a, uh, an SME gets access to funds in the highest possible chance that we believe we can make. If you go directly to one lender, you, you don't know whether that lender is your, that business is right for that lender. They may say that they are willing to accept that application, but the reality is that you know, lenders all have their, their criteria, and those in underwriting capacity are always tighter than their kind of marketing websites. Um, and so you can go down a lot of dead ends um, looking at, at providers um, that maybe aren't suitable. So the role of us as Capitalize is to, is to remove those dead ends um, and to create a single application so that um, a, a client of yours um, can come on with a single application, go to multiple lenders at once, multiple C-bills in this case, uh, whatever else that might be in the future. Um, one thing we saw through the crisis as well, just to, as a final comment, is that the, the lending market was changing so quickly. Um, you know, we, we went from working with a community of say a dozen lenders over here to a dozen over here to now you know, a different group over here, and that, that composition has changed radically um, through through the crisis. And so we were able to to add in and remove lenders and so on in a very dynamic fashion, um, almost daily at uh, you know through so April and May. Um, so I think we found a lot of support from our accounting community there, where. Um, the market was moving so quickly and was so volatile that you know having a single trusted partner like Capitalize was really helpful. Um, it meant they could get, they had the confidence to say to their clients, "We can help you with this," um, rather than sort of saying either you know I don't know or try X or try Y, without not much knowledge and knowing whether that actually that that lender was the right choice at this, at this, this point. So um, yeah, I think you know we've we felt like whilst it's been a tough time to be a marketplace, um, you know we felt that our role in, in helping businesses has been has been has been sort of uh, vindicated. Okay, and and that's really good. And and what one of the things that I'd like to start to work through now, um, so that the listeners when they go away can really gain an understanding. Uh, I like to work on it on a practical basis of saying, okay, well, how can I actually go away from this webinar and start to implement this so I can become that advisor to do this with my clients. And I think we've established throughout any uh, business environment, cash is always king, better alone when you're obviously recovering from a pandemic. Um, and I think what you've, what you've said there is key. It's a case of, yes, yeah, surviving the crisis, but then also the recovery and how we can equip the advisors who are listening and the accountants today to say, okay, how can you be that advisor to help your clients through these, uh, through these times and especially when it comes to the funding um, and the steps to do that and then how Capitalize can help with that as well. Because I suppose for a lot of the people listening today, it's a case of, what do we want what do we need to say is okay well what's that first step if i'm sitting here today and i've got clients calling me and saying right can you help me with this and it's a case of yes i want to what do i need to do as that first step or how do i reach out to the clients perhaps to say this is something that we can do if you didn't realize uh, don't go yeah. elsewhere come to me and i can help you because the benefits from the accountant side as i see it is that they can gain an extra uh, revenue stream from it if they do it right and i understand you've got some really good uh, content on your website about pricing it and yes, people can yeah. obtain that after how to actually price this type of work up for clients and um, but also as well you build that relationship and I, and, and I know one of the things that you really like to talk about is how this can actually be the start of the journey to build the better relationship with that client as well so for me they're yeah. the two 
key things. You gain revenue yeah. from it, then you build a better relationship with the client. But what's the first step on the road, basically? Yeah, no, good, good question. So, look, I mean, I, I'm, um, I was a consultant for, for 15 years prior to this. So I've looked at it from a kind of consultant's angle in speaking with, with many accounting firms. I think, yeah. you know, the, the first step is, is, is a cloud transition. You know, I think for a lot of firms, um, if, if that hasn't taken place, then the reality is that that probably needs to be solved first, um, already started that transition first to maintain a competitive position in the market um, as a firm attracting new, new clients. Um, I think then we see ourselves as being in kind of a post cloud transition um, where that, that service is competitive. So there is an aspect of automation already in the service um, to, to create that time to have the conversations for these value add conversations. The question then, and I think this is probably, you know, a question which, you know, each app vendors probably got their own answer to. Um, but I'll try and give an, give an agnostic honest view, which is that it, it really depends what the, your client base needs. Um, you know, the conversation will reveal um, different needs at different times. Um, and, you know, obviously through C-bills and bounce backs, that's been a highlight of access to debt funding, um, access to grants. Um, I think our, our case is that all businesses need capital. Um, I think, you know, we can always we can sit here and say that businesses don't need external capital. But the fact is that, you know, all, all balance sheets start with, with zero assets, zero liabilities and zero equity. At some point, um, you know, business has got to build up those assets, build up the equity value of their business to be able to go on and buy whatever they need to do to, to, to trade. Um, so whether you take that capital in as sweat equity, whether you take it in as personal loans, you know, release out of home equity, um, or you take it in as debt finance, or you take it as grants, you know, these are all very viable ways of, of bringing capital into the business to invest, to grow, to, to uh, invest working capital, whatever it might be. So fundamentally, we see that as a, as a function that an accountant can play. Um, it's not so much saying, you know, accountants should be providing access to lenders. Really, the, the, the main reason that an SME might come to, to, a, to an accountant is to say, um, how, can I, how can I grow? And that's probably the, you know, or how can I survive or how can I, you know, survive or thrive or gripe or, or grow, whatever the term is of the, of, of the firm. But um, the, the, the problems that come out of that question are, right, okay, well, where can I get capital? Um, and that's, that's where we step in. So in a way, you know, we're sitting behind the scenes with that conversation and, and whether it's an inbound conversation, whether it's a consultation that's offered out to clients to speak to them about how they're doing, and there's lots of um, players in the market who are, who are having good conversations around that. And we've just launched um, with Kirsty from the CFN, Le the Leave No Business Behind campaign, um, which has been hugely successful with, I think, around 500 uh, signups to it. And um, this is where we're encouraging conversations with, with clients. So to say, you know, don't leave any business behind. It's a tough time. Um, it's continues to be a tough time. So just speak to the clients, see how they're doing with a set of agendas to, to discuss with them. And out of that might come, might come, I need a cash flow forecast, or I need some help with some HR advice or some tax advice or whatever those, com those, those inquiries might be. And for me, that, those are the things that, that fall under the banner of business advisory. They're questions, they're, they're you know, they could be wealth, uh, you know, personal wealth questions, tax planning, retirement planning, all those things. And that those are the pieces of, of, uh, of financial advice that, that the business owners want, want to get from their accounting firm. Um, quite a few of those linked to, to access to capital. And so that's where we see Capitalize plugging into. So we're part of the app stack. There'll be other solutions for HR advice. You know, we, we've, we've spoken with Citrus HR, who you know, we're, a great, we're great fans of, who provide you know, yeah. great tools for, for HR. Um, and there's a myriad of, of cash flow tools out there. There's Excel, there's uh, all the automated cash flow tools that I'm sure you're fully aware of as well. So you know, I think building up that stack is important. So for the, um, for the, for the firm, I think it's important to think about, you know, what do you want to build now? Um, you know, is access to capital something that, that you feel passionate about in your business? Um, do you have somebody in your firm who has been doing this perhaps, uh, you know, in, on, in, off their own bat? If, the, if they have, then they're probably a great person to have capitalized under their, their, their purview. And, you know, we call them capitalized champions um so all they need to do is have have access to capitalize and be that kind of that, that access point in your firm for your clients um it's not a question of you know you don't need to do a huge rollout to your to your clients um you don't need to do a huge rollout across your firm um what we encourage is the building of what we call a funding team um who have access to capitalize go through our training program i can see phil's on, on the line here as well who heads up our education team um, so access to online learning, access to our playbook, and a, really the point there is how to bring Capitalize in as a service out to your clients, um, and that's what we provide.
Okay, and that's really useful. And I suppose one of the questions that I get uh, seen asked a lot, just then anything when it comes to rolling stuff out with your accountants, is that time element and, and the time and effort that's needed to be put in. Now, yes, there's going to be a need, uh, need to be a commitment into this, like with anything else, because yeah. if you want to do something properly, you're going to have to invest into it. But could exactly, you give yeah. a bit of a sort of a, a teaser of what that might actually look like if somebody was to do that with Capitalize so they get an idea? Absolutely. Of, you know, this, so, isn't, this isn't going to be a full time job for the next five years. It's no. an idea of what it is. No. So, I mean, I, th I think we, I mean, this is where I hope my hub's been less agnostic, but I think there's a yeah. huge um, value exchange here. Um, so, the, the, the cost of, of maintaining all the relationships with the different lenders, all the knowledge there and setting that up is, is expensive. It's taken us four years um, with, a, with a relatively mature team doing it. Um, and that's all available as, as a SaaS license. So, you know, th that's the, the first bit is you don't need to go off and invest and build, sign a hundred agreements with lenders and all the reg regulatory requirements and disclosures and, and all the calculations that need to happen in there. You know, that, that comes you know, as, a, as a relatively low cost monthly license. So that's that's a direct cost. In terms of the, your personnel costs, um, you pretty much just need one person to to have knowledge of how Capitalize works, and then you know there's, there's no upfront work required to onboard clients and so on and so forth. It's it's that you just need to have someone who's there. Um, of course, taking it to market, you need to speak to your clients about it as well. So there's there's a relatively lightweight engagement there. The the upside then for a firm is kind of a couple of ways. Firstly, there is um, we provide a commission share back, but that's not really the main reason for doing it. That I think in almost all cases just pays for the time of running the transaction. So um, the, in terms of that time, um, the requirement would be to create an application um, on behalf of your clients. So that usually means um, inputting um, management accounts, um, getting bank statements, um, VAT returns, and all those kind of things that may be required. And it, it depends on which products and which route you're going down as to what documents are required. But let's say that's 20 minutes of time, plus there's a, yeah. you know, a bit of um, back and forth um, with any further questions and obviously then presenting those offers back to the client. So it's not a huge investment per transaction, and that's covered by a share of the commission, um, which either you can take um, as commission, and we manage the disclosures for you, um, or you can offer it as a credit for, against services with the client. So that that kind of it pays for itself in that sense, and and that will pay for the license with us. But that's not really going to going to set set the world on fire. The, the main reason for doing this is the type of relationship you have with those clients who are getting funded, um, who are accessing capital. So those tend to be the top tier clients in an accounting firm. They tend to be the clients who are becoming serious about what the future holds for them. Um, they want to double down on that future. Of course, you know, and I've got a, an, a, an article out which I'd love to share, which is around. The, the thinking around how to think of capital and really what it's doing is bringing the future forward. So the reason you'd take investment is because you want to aim for the, for the future. You want to either use your uh, retain, future retained profits and have them today in the case of an unsecured loan or securitized case an asset, whatever it might be. So that business is thinking, I want to go somewhere. I want to get to that place. And they probably want some help getting there. So that means they probably want to have management accounts. They probably might want to have reviews. They, they want to have the bookkeeping up to date. They want to have all the other things that you might provide as value added services. So that's a, it's a perfect opportunity to build a closer relationship with the client and to start to, um, to, to bring them up into a, to a higher level of service in the firm. So for me, that's, that's the, the sort of two bits that go together. Yes, there is a commission share that goes on. And that helps to pay for capitalizers license fee. It pays, pays for all the time that you've spent setting it up. But the main value here is about, is about going deeper with clients. Um, you know, in many cases, um, clients will want to have um, forecasts um, for, for, for taking on the, the loan. They want to have management accounts for any investors or even for lenders who might require it. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that sits around it. That, and that's really where the, the, the real um, advisory revenue comes from in, in, with Capitalize. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much for that. And when uh, people are actually on the platform and looking at various forms of capital, through Capitalize, what do you have at the moment? So I know you have an array of, uh, of, of forms of funding available yep. on the system. You've got a couple of other ones that are coming through at the moment and you're just rolling out around recovery yeah, exactly. as well. So it'd be great to understand that. Yeah, so so the the marketplace as we as we call it is is um, the access to the lenders community. So there's a hundred yeah. different lenders on there, um, and you can access through one application form. Um, the yeah. second sort of type of capital we've got is is releasing uh, capital that's tied up in disputes and, and bad debts, um, which is called recovery. Um, so recovery is is another product on Capitalize um, where it's again it's a, it's a no no fee uh, no win no fee process where um, if you see and this is a, you know, a great time to look at it is when you're preparing accounts, there's you know, a large bad debt figure 
um, on on the client's uh, on the client's uh, balance sheet. There's an opportunity to release that that cash back. So you can go back three years, um, put an application through Capitalize, it then gets considered as to whether the case will be accepted by the legal partner who we work with, um, called Escalate. And um, if it's accepted, then then they'll take it from there um, and go through a, um, a legally legal led. Um, process to to recover that cash and of course that cash comes back to the business as, as cash and they can invest it and and uh, you know continue to, to survive and or grow their business um, so those are the two we've got now um, we've got future ones coming down which I think I probably will, will leave to future you know future release yes. but you can imagine what they might be the other forms of capital um, I think we identified 18 different ways you can get capital in many of which um, accounting firms are doing already so capital allowances um, you know, R and D tax claims, all these things are are, are, are really all for us orbiting around the same concept of bringing investable cash into the business today. Yeah, that's great. And and one of the great things I know you have, which you bring in an update to or rolling out a new version of, is the monitor tool as well. Do you want to talk people around that? Because I think yeah. this is really key in terms of keeping an oversight of your of your client base. Yeah, so this is something which which we, we won um, some some awards for and grants and so on. Um, so Monitor is is again part of the Capitalized platform, um, and this is really a question of looking at your client portfolio and identifying what opportunities there are for those clients and risks yeah. as well. So if you um, were to connect the clients to to to, to Capitalize, um, we provide um, insight both on the client level. So we have like a yeah. basically a health report, which you can look at and identify um, different opportunities within their balance sheet, within facilities that they already have, so refinancing and so on. Um, but also at portfolio level, which means that you can bring some efficiency into, into how you work with your clients. So rather than, um, I suppose, being reactive, um, you could say do a targeted campaign to a group of, of businesses that, for example, have this uh, an opportunity to use recovery where they ha all have higher high bad debts uh, in, the, in the balance sheet. Yeah. So it might be a targeted campaign. Um, and very simply, um, all you can do there is, is you can email that group um, a, a calendar booking, calendly booking link. So they can book in some time for a consultation. Yeah. And you know, that's an, a, the conversation starter there. So an opportunity to reach out with some knowledge that you know that there is a topic to discuss. Um, and we call that, that uh, conversations. Um, so that's not yet in the public domain, but um, will be coming fairly soon. And um, we've had some great feedback so far on it. Okay, that's really good. And um, I think one of the things everybody likes is a good story or a good case study. Or so. Have you got any sort of recent case studies or stories of uh, anything that's sort of gone well when uh, accountants have been working with Capitalize and any success stories of how that's gone and what it looked like? Yeah, I think. I mean, the, there's. I mean, we've got different case studies for different size firms. So you know, I think yeah. I've got you know a couple in my mind. Um, so. For example, someone like Bishop Fleming, um, you know, a large, large multi-office um, firm, uh, has a corporate finance team. You know, they, they, they've been, they've got, you know, a fully fledged corporate finance team, um, you know, with, with multiple individuals within it. And you know, the question is, how does Capitalize fit in, in in that situation? And so, you know, corporate finance can cover a range of different things. There are some activities that are, you know, very high value, complex, very much consultative and, and, and human human led. And then there are some cases which are perhaps quite straightforward, but you know, maybe from a corporate finance angle, don't um, make sense to, to, to apply the same methodology to. So in that case, yeah. you know, we work as a tool for the corporate finance team to satisfy certain types of criteria. So it might be that their criteria is anything less than a million pounds comes through capitalize everything over they deal with um, through their the dedicated corporate finance team and, and family office boutiques, equity raising, all those kind of things, which are very yeah. you know, high value um, activities. And then we've got um, you know, businesses like, um, uh, Nefos, so Joe David at Nefos, who you know, kind of a smaller cloud native um, firm who um, who wants to just have a single a single place where where their firm can can handle these types of problems. They haven't got a corporate finance team, nor is it on their roadmap in the immediate future. Yet they still want to be able to offer the service and solve those client problems. At which point we can just solve all of their needs in that situation. Um, and you've got the middle-sized firms. You know, someone like uh, Nordens, for example. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Nordens, um, but you know, have got um, a, a brewing strategic advisory team um, who yeah. are having strategic conversations with their clients. So it's a dedicated team and they want to be able to solve those problems. So whilst they might have, for example, have an IFA in-house, they're not necessarily ready to build out the full corporate finance team. So again, we can kind of slot in there. So in a lot of cases, we are, you know, the kind of ready, ready bait corporate finance alternative for, for firms. Um, but yeah. it's kind of corporate finance done differently. It's not, um, it's not as you might imagine, it's, it's uh, obviously a tech platform. Yeah, 
Okay, no, that's really good because I think I think the key is with with these, and I, I have it a lot. I think everybody does. When you go and listen to something or listen to somebody speak at the time, you think, yeah, this is great. Let's do it. And then it's okay. So how does that? Yeah, how does that actually look in practice for me, or how are others doing it? And I think it's useful for people to understand that, isn't it? Just yeah. Yeah, I think, um, look, the, the reality is we, we've got different plans. So, you know, there's a, there's a starter plan where if you wanted to get started, you want to just run some of your clients kind of work in this kind of reactive way. Um, that's a great place to start. Um, and that's you know, where many, many um, firms will start, um, you know, do what you're doing already today but just do it better uh, rather than necessarily committing to doing something completely new um, and then of course as you see this um, this work and as you become very comfortable with it you know you might be you say right actually maybe we we want to stay look start looking at monitor for example and we want to start speaking yeah. to clients proactively or it might be maybe we want to actually market this service rather than just dealing with what comes in through the door we want to go out and you know do a client webinar around it or something like that so it's all about you know, building this like any service line, um, you start you start where you where you are today, and then you grow yeah. it um, as you as it as you see market demands um, demanding for it. And you know, right now there's there's been a huge demand for this. Um, so as a result, you know, we've seen lots of firms who maybe were thinking about this. Maybe they should do it. Maybe maybe later. Actually, this has become um, something which is very important to their clients. Yeah, and that's good. And just following on from that, actually, about the various plans that you've got, there was a question that came in, a, a, an on an anonymous question. Uh, get my uh, lips around that one. So what does it cost in terms of time and money to actually work with Capitalize? So I think uh, the packages that you've mentioned are on the website for people to go and have a look at. And I think from the time perspective, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've already, I think we did a good job and Ali probably covered that quite well in terms of uh, obviously dedicating the time to actually liaise with your clients put the information into the capitalized platform and go from there. So I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to yeah, add so, to that. So I think there's, there's the, um, that's the transactional time, I guess. Um, which is, and then there's the sort of setup time. Um, so, you know, broadly it's, um, there's a training session. There is um, an online learning course as well. So, um, which we, we very much encourage um, everyone to go through. We see much more success with, with firms that have been through the learning course and also um, yeah. been through our training sessions. Um, they're probably about an hour, an hour and a half each. There's two of them. Um, and and then of course that there's kind of the that's the setup cost within your firm. So, you know whether that's lunch and learn sessions, um, you know socialising um, what Capitalize can do in your firm. Um, and we've got a whole program and account management team um, who would partner with you through that journey. So um, you know, a dedicated account manager who would take you through and different are uh, different plans have different journeys. So you know very much in the starter and, and partner plan is quite lightweight. Um, you know. I would say it's, it was it was purely digital. Now everything everything's digital, so it's not much differentiation yeah. there. But yeah. um, it's it's lighter in the sense that you know you probably have fewer people to get on board. I think we say you know three people uh, on the firm to come on, including the ch yeah. the champion. Um, in larger firms, that will be you know up five, ten, maybe even fifteen people who are in different offices coming on board. So um, that's the pro addition. So partner is probably you know great for for firms who've got say two fifty clients up to say a thousand clients and then um you know pro is for those who've got sort of 750 up to 4,000 clients kind of there's a bit of an overlap yeah. there but depends on, on your needs and and um we have a consultation um so you know right at the beginning of the process um about one of the main things i'd suggest is to have the consultation it's you know it's a free conversation yeah. with with our, our team here um who can you know talk about your firm talk about your needs and you know i suppose discover as to which which plan if any plan is is right for you um and yeah. you know we'd love to have that chat yeah, no, that's really good. And one of the things that we'll actually do, we'll just launch a poll now as well. Um, we'll keep that running for the rest of the webinar. Um, yeah. Just from a follow-up perspective, um, in terms of if you want um, uh, to be able to, to be contacted in terms of these plans and just yeah. general discussion. We're not going well, to so. we're not going to go crazy on the contact. Don't worry. It's just a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, a lightweight conversation. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. So um, yeah, so yeah, if you if you see that pop, that should pop up now. So feel free to please just click one of those, and we'll collect, collate those at the end. Um, and be in touch accordingly. Um, so uh, a couple of bits um, um, on there. Uh, let me just have a quick look because there's a couple of questions that have come in. So I just want to see because uh, these sort of follow on from some of the points that we've Yeah, there's quite a long one in. there. I could try and read. Yeah, so, yeah, well, I want to sort of break it down into two points. I think if we do it in reverse order, that might quite quite well because Claire, I just wanted to confirm one of the points that you were making on the, on the first side of it. So I understand the second point being, which we can dive into is, uh, people who have deferred things like VAT payments, uh, payments on account, and just obviously uh, pushing all sorts of things about lease agreements, whatever it may be. When January and the new year comes around and that deadline from HMRC, um, we uh, basically, when the businesses haven't been able to recover as quickly as possible, um, I suppose, what, what are the options for those? And 
And I think that leads on nicely from what you were saying about not just getting through the crisis, but getting through the recovery. Because that's yeah. Leading into the I mean, I think that this right? is this is kind of that that um, that model that I was explaining, but in 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 a macro sense. So you know, yeah. funding is always taken at the beginning of a beginning of some kind of journey, and you know, we that's just happened in the, the biggest manner possible um, through the crisis. And you know, sad as it is that we had to deal with it, we, we also have to deal with the the, the recovery as well. Um, and so. Um, the, the answer to this, I think, is 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 in the nuance of, of a cash flow, um, and yeah. you know, figuring out when those liabilities arrive and when they're due. So, in, in my experience of you know, running my previous business and, and this business, I, you know, we tend to do our cash flow modelling based on a model uh, rather than necessarily on just relying on the say thirty or sixty or ninety day um, uh, estimations based on on payments and and income coming in. So, looking at three, six, 12 months out, you know, how big is that gap that we might need? And of course, a big element of that is forecasting revenue, um, which we tend to do on, on a kind of, you know, formulaic basis. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that piece is important, um, figuring out wh where those, those cash flow crunches are. Um, and I think through the leave no business behind campaign, this is something that, that's really resonated with the community. Um, and, you know, however your cash flow service is, is presented to the market will, will vary um but in the very least it will require books that are up to date so you know that that's the the conversation there is is, is making sure that the you know the cloud accounting books are up to date that's a great touch point there um when it comes to the the capital i think you know certainly what we're seeing a lot of at the moment are our c bills of our previous bounce back loan borrowers coming in for c bills to refinance the bounce back loan out for a bigger amount so Siebel's loans you can refinance and you uh, bounce back and you can take multiple Siebel's loans as well um, yeah. so long as it's under the 25 percent of a business's turnover so what we're seeing now is the immediate re knee-jerk reaction was to take a bounce back and that, that's a fair enough assumption to do and now i think when, when everyone's starting to get a bit more familiar with what the recovery looks like what those numbers might look like what liabilities are then you know perhaps that 30 or 20 or 50 thousand that was taken from bounce back is not enough for their for their business to grow so I think we'll see a lot more of that. Um, there is nominally a deadline for C-bills of the 30th of September, um, which um, you know, we very much hope and we're, we're kind of agitating in the market for it to be extended. Um, it was present before the crisis in terms of the enterprise finance guarantee scheme from, from the British Business Bank. So I'd hope that that will continue. Um, and, you know, the other 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 point is, you know, there are lots of different products out there that can be blended together. So um, you're looking at both an unsecured lending invoice finance um, equity release from property um, you know i think 40 percent of, of commercial property has no is unencumbered or no debt associated with it so you know there's a, there's a big liquidity pool there too so i think as as we're, we're coming you know out of the crisis into the recovery some more sensible decisions are being made and some more meaningful conversations can be happen between the accountant uh, as an advisor and their clients um, so that's i think what we're seeing and you know we're here to serve to serve all of those needs um, with the question there around, I think the first bit of, of Claire's question around a um, a business who who didn't want to take a bounce back loan because they were unsure about the the recovery. I think yeah. you know I can only speak in generalisations. This is not not advice, but obviously a lot of people have taken those with the knowledge that there's no repayment charges and there's no interest or repayments in the first 12 months. So what's happened is a lot of those bounce back loans are actually sitting on deposit accounts at the moment. Um, so businesses never had more cash in their business in a lot of cases. They've not paid VAT. They've taken loans that they don't necessarily know that they need, um, and they've had furlough uh, covering a lot of the, the costs. Um, so the question now is: is how is that cash pile enough, um, particularly when you feather in the, 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 the liabilities? So I think we're seeing the union of planning and then access to the market of capital as, as being you know two key components, and obviously we provide the second one. Yeah, no, that's great. And and uh, Kirsty, uh, sorry, not Kirsty. Claire, sorry, I hope that answered the question. Let us know if it did or if it didn't, if you want to add anything else to that. Um, and just to encourage anybody else as well, if you've got any question now, now's the time to drop them in. That'd be great. Um, and thank you to Kirsty for the kind words uh, for Ali. So I'm not sure if uh, you need to slip slip a fiver under the desk after that. <laughs> Actually, strange to <laughs> so be doing, Kirsty. Just been a, been a supporter of us. I'm, maybe, I'm sure we'll have to, uh, have to uh, pay her later, she says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, th thanks for that. It's uh, it's just nice to see some good encouragement um, for others as well that it actually worked yeah. and people are using this and making the most of it and they've, they've had their own success um, with this sort of model. So so one of the questions that I've been chucking at everybody recently um, that I've been doing these with, just while we sort of see if any more comes through, 
uh, from the attendees is uh, during sort of the lockdown and the lockdown period, have you either come up with a new hobby or resurrected a previous hobby? This is a bit of a personal. Yeah. I uh, wish something I wish. I've been thrown out to everybody. I wish I had. You know what? It's been it's been really um, it's been seven days a week full time. We we did a fundraise yeah. in the middle of COVID as well, so as capitalised. Oh, wow. um, okay. So we've um, you know we, we we did that, which was which was very busy. So um, for me, it's been it's been a lot of video calls um, and. Uh, and uh, actually the, the one thing I, i've done more of which is sounds quite out there is something called breath work so you know s some of my friends have um, started doing that which is just a um a way of, of breathing to uh to, to clear your mind a bit so it's kind of related to meditation so a bit of that to uh to try and get a little bit of a break whilst in lockdown stuck at home with with two kids under three um yeah. has been uh, just trying to create some space which is really important i think if i'd just expand that a bit more i think the it's just you, you need some space to think and i think you know yeah. creating that space in in the accountancy firm in in a small business is is tough because it's yeah. it's always on there's so much stuff going on um and so i think you know one thing that, that we we would love to see is um hopefully technology creating some of that space um so that actually you can have a business that's yeah. that's that's working with a bit less less effort <laughs> and so you know that's that's what that's, that's the upside of technology and businesses yeah and that's good and i think that is a key takeaway uh, like you say from that just creating that space and that time to think um, and doing that with your clients as well giving them a breather sometimes as well I think one of the things I was chatting to an accountant and she was saying that some of the best conversations are where she's phoned a client and they've gone out for a walk and they've just spoken for 20 odd minutes and the client's like oh I just feel much better about everything yeah now. I can, well of course I can carry if, on. You're, if you're in a business you only speak to your colleagues and there are certain things that that become political um that yeah. you can't speak about openly um and you know whenever you speak to someone from outside the organization who's not connected um you can be very honest and truthful and say actually you know what i'm finding it tough or, or that you know i've uh, this is something which i want to um i need help with it's it's politically yeah. challenging and you know that's a big spirit behind the leave no business behind campaign um which is about having those conversations opening up um you know both emotionally and and uh, and you know with practical advice at the same time so and hopefully that means you know longer term deeper relationships um with your clients and, and therefore you know a, a more stable and successful practice too yeah no and that's really good and and, and i think uh as far as i'm aware we've, we've done a good job of answering the questions hopefully we've covered everybody's thoughts because we've not had any any more coming through so but, well i just want to say thank you ollie for that i think that's well look, really th good. David, th thanks for thanks for the invitation and uh look we'd uh, happy to come back and, and share our thoughts too yeah definitely and and i learned a lot from it if nobody else did as well so i think <laughs> it was really good and uh, and yeah i just want to thank you for everybody for jumping on and um, like i said we'll do a bit of a follow on follow up accordingly just to make sure everybody um is aware of what's out there and uh, and have a great rest of your day rest of your week cool thanks, thanks david bye bye bye, bye, bye.